Hey folks, it's Matt Eland, and I wanted to share some updates with you. So I haven't been posting much of my blogs, and I haven't been uh, posting many videos, because this year I was approached by Pack Publishing to write a book on refactoring with C Sharp. And that book is releasing on uh, Black Friday, uh, November 24th, uh, 2023. So in all likelihood, it's already released by the time you watch this. And I'm really excited about the project, and I want to tell you why. So this book serves two different types of people, and I've been both of them. The first person it serves is this, those developers in the first few years of their career. They are they know the basics of .NET development and then working with C Sharp, Visual Studio, things like that. But they are learning how to be a good developer in a corporate code base and how to uh, not create God classes and not, not create technical debt everywhere and to uh, improve things without breaking things as well. Uh, and so that type of person is the type of person I wrote the book for. Um, I have taught for the last three years up until this year. I have taught new developers and many of my grads are now at the point where they are transitioning from junior developer to mid-level developer. And so this is kind of a book for really past Matt, but also people like the students I've taught before, helping them go from junior to mid or mid to senior. Right? Building those, those competencies with testing and refactoring and identifying code that needs to be changed and changing it safely and effectively. Now, that's the first type of person the book is for. The second type of person the book is for is also someone I've been. And that's the person who is maybe leading a project around some technical debt areas, some legacy code, and they are stuck with this code. They may or may not have written it themselves. It doesn't really matter uh, if you're responsible for maintaining it. And so how do you, as a senior dev or lead developer or .NET developer development manager, how do you take this code base and work with it effectively, help others work with it effectively without breaking production? Okay, so the book really starts with uh, the basics of refactoring and why you would want to. Uh, it focuses on basically some simple, simple cases. And then it goes into, hey, how do I refactor individual lines of code? And then the next chapter gets into how do I refactor methods? How do I focus at the method level and start thinking a little bit more broadly? And then it zooms out a little more and it says, hey, at the object level, how can I use object-oriented programming techniques to uh, really start tackling some of my more tricky areas of code, right? That's really the first fourth of the book. Now, the second fourth gets into testing because testing is really, really important if you're going to be refactoring because you don't want to break everything. So I start simple with the basics of testing, uh, unit testing in particular. I cover X unit, in unit, and MS test V2. And then I move on to test driven development um, and test driven development for refactoring code, for fixing bugs, and even for designing new features, which is kind of interesting. Uh, and then we start to get into the really fun stuff. We talk about more advanced unit testing concepts. We talk about the uh, obligatory things like mock, uh, but we also talk about you know, a lot more advanced stuff. Uh, libraries like Fluid Insertions, Shouldly, uh, Scientist.net, a personal favorite of mine. We touch on Bogus, uh, Ardalis Guard Clauses, uh, many, many, many libraries. That's one of my favorite chapters in the book. Um, and then after that, we have a, a discussion of how some of the more recent changes in C Sharp uh, can, and .NET in general can really uh, help you write more maintainable code. Uh, as we get into more defensive coding techniques. Now, that's the first half of the book, the first two parts of the book. Part three really starts to get into the code analysis portion of things. So looking at uh, utilizing the uh, code analysis warnings that we have in Visual Studio, uh, but also how they work, because we get into Roslyn and how do you write your own Roslyn analyzer? How do you write your own Roslyn code fix to create actually your own uh, ways of refactoring code automatically? We talk about metrics like psychomatic complexity, uh, we talk about even some external tools such as uh, Independ and SonarCube to help you analyze your code bases and communicate that to others. Okay. That's part three of the book. Ah, <laughs> yeah, here I am, AI specialist. I forgot uh, one of those chapters in part three. We also talk about using AI tools uh, such as GitHub Copilot chat to really help understand your code, to help you uh, identify places where you might want to refactor it. Identify candidate tests. I wouldn't actually use it to generate my tests, but it can help you think about your tests. Um, and and uh, even you know help you refactor and uh, just, just generally 
work better with your code. Okay? Now, part four is maybe the most important part for a development manager or team lead or something like that. And it's the challenge of, challenges of refactoring code are often more political than technical. And so how do you communicate the technical debt you have in a way that the business can take it seriously? How do you get buy-in to make these changes? How do you establish coding standards for you and your organization when you need those? You don't always need those, but sometimes they can be helpful. And then how can you refactor at a higher level? Some things you can't fix by uh, changing a couple lines of code. Some things you have to make drastic changes. So how do you do that? How do you do that with an agile environment? And that's really the focus of the book. Now, it releases uh, November 24th, uh, 2023, so it's almost certainly out by the time you you, uh, you watch this. Uh, I highly encourage you to check it out. If you've got questions about what's, what's in it, please get in touch with me. Um, I wrote this uh, really for my students. I wrote this for uh, past Matt, <laughs> both as a new developer and as a development manager. Uh, but I also wrote this for the larger .NET community. Uh, Pact convinced me that there was a, a gap here uh, I didn't think that we really were missing a, a book on refactoring with C Sharp, but it, it turns out there's really not a lot on refactoring with modern .NET and taking advantage of all the wonderful things that we have in Visual Studio and C Sharp language. So uh, check it out. I'm really excited about it. Uh, you can find it on Amazon in either uh, print or paperback uh, or Kindle uh, format. Uh, Pact also has more information on their site as well, and I will link to that in the description of this video. Uh, but let me know what you think. I hope you really like it. I found it really fulfilling to write it. Um, I'm also not done writing yet. I am talking with uh, a publisher about a contract for a book in 2024. So uh, stay tuned for more on that. But uh, I hope you uh, get a lot of use out of this. I hope you learn from the things that I've learned over my career. And uh, I hope you can work with code that you're really proud of.